American Express or whatever, if you don't wanna connect directly to them, or you wanna practice, you wanna to put together your own bank feeds to practice with, you can download this information from there or make your own uh, file, which we'll, we'll take a look at in a second. So uh, to download it, you go to your financial institution and usually somewhere there's gonna be download account activity, which is different than looking at the finance by the uh, reports. You're not looking at your bank statements or credit card statements because those will be in PDF format. We want this in a format that can be uploaded to the system, which will generally be, for example, oftentimes they have a QuickBooks format, which isn't QuickBooks Online software. It's just like a data input format. So that one works pretty well and that most institutions have that. Quicken, you don't really want that one. Uh, and then if they don't have those, any of those, you can use the comma delimited, which usually is opened in like a spreadsheet format. And then it, if you wanna just practice, you can make your own file with a, a spreadsheet and then just create a comma delimited or CSV file. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm gonna go up top and just say that if I go back into my accounting and I go into my bank feeds and I want it to manually import, and by the way, you might want to manually import in situations where it's like you're going really far back, like you're going more than a year, like a year back or more, because sometimes you can get more data from the bank by manually downloading it as opposed to connecting to the bank. And then possibly you might want to connect to the bank after, after that. That's one reason you might use a manual upload in practice other than just to practice with. Once you get the data in, from the manual upload or from the bank feeds, you will be in what I call the bank feed limbo area where all the information will be in your system but not yet used to create the financial statements. It's, it's in limbo, it has not been uh, brought through, it needs a little bit more information, some enlightenment in order to bring it on through the promised land to be used to create the financial statements. So we can up, if I go to the drop down here, then we can import the statement so if I import the statement, that makes you think the way they word it, that you're gonna get the PDF file and import it, but that's not what's happening here. Uh, in, it, what, instead, you're gonna be importing these files that we look like. So download bank statements from your online banking. Again, you're not really downloading like a bank statement, you're downloading a series of, of transactions. You're downloading like the bank feed. Now you could, like those bank formats is an OFX, a QFX, a QIF, there's that QBO, which is quite common. And if usually most of them will have a spreadsheet format, which will be S CSV if nothing else, right? Now, if you wanna make your own, you can look at the template here. And like, if you just wanna make your transactions, you can actually just pull up the template and you can put your data input into this template, you know, date, amount, uh, description, and, uh, and, and, that's, and, and that's it and then you can upload your own data and you can and you can play with the bank feeds that way. Uh, I'm gonna be using this file. So I downloaded a file that looks like this. It's a credit card file, and uh, but it's in quick, it looks like a QuickBooks like desktop program or something, but it isn't. If I right click on it and I, uh, it is a, it's formatted, I guess, by QuickBooks or, or they got, came up with the formatting or whatever but it's not actually the software, it's just a data input format. It's just a way to format the data that can easily be brought in to these online applications. So it's a it's an OFX data dot QBO. Okay, so let's import that uh, in here. So I'm just gonna say select the file. It's on the desktop, which is a messy situation but I know where everything is. My desk, the top of my desk has a lot of stuff on it, but it's not like, uh, it's not like I'm unorganized because you just don't understand how I organize it. So I'm gonna upload it and it's uploading 16 transactions. So, okay. So then we're just gonna complete the import and there it is. So now, just to recap, if I go into my accounting transaction and I look at uh, my bank accounts, I now have my credit card account has stuff in it now. So, so I'm gonna go into, so it's all negative. Now you have the same beginning balance issue with the credit cards because it's only gonna be pulling in the activity. 
So if you had activity before the time that you started putting the credit card in, you're gonna have to deal with that beginning balance issue, which we might talk, we'll talk about in a future presentation when we do the first bank reconciliation. Once we're, we've done that, everything should run smoothly. It should be quite easy after that. If I go into the dropdown, the account transactions, we've got the account transactions on the right. These are the transactions that we have made. We don't have any because we're usually with the credit cards, we're gonna be dependent on the financial institution to create the financial statements because they're perfect transactions to do that. I mean, we could have a system and in a full service accounting system, every time I make a, a purchase on the credit card, I would then record it as a purchase and then match it to the credit card using the financial institution as a verification. But we're getting to the point where the credit cards, we're, we're so confident in them. And because the turnaround time is so fast that these are perfect transactions to just say, look, I'm just gonna depend on the bank here. So in other words, when I record the transaction, I'm not gonna record it on my side. I'm gonna wait till it clears the bank, which should happen in one to three days. And then I can just record it that way. So, so I'm, I'm for, we're so confident about these transactions that that's what most people are gonna do. So that means we didn't record anything on our side. The bank is recording them on their side because this is what got pulled in from the bank feeds. So this is what got pulled in. It's not reconciled yet. We have the cash coding. Remember, if you don't see this, you can go into your user uh, area and then just turn on the cash coding so that you can see the cash coding if you want that. It's not on by default. You have to go into you know, the users uh, and then turn on in the banking section. I think the cash coding, we talked about that before. I won't do it again because we're running along here. And then if I go into the reconcile, so now we can build our financial statements. So this is what I call the bank feed limbo because these transactions have now been brought in from the bank, but they have not yet been used to make the financial statements. They're still missing something. Something's wrong. They're not quite there yet. They don't know, they don't have all, they don't have everything to be fully fulfilled and therefore be pulled in to, uh, to the promised land. So what do they need, of course? Uh, all we have, these are all gonna be usually decreases. So unlike with the checking account, we don't really have deposits, but we have we have payments, which are kind of like. But but really, we only uh, you know we have, we pay off the credit card. But really, every all the transactions here are going to be expense type transactions, and then we pay off the credit card. Right? Those are the transactions that are going to be here. So usually, the other side of the transaction, what we will construct, is an expense for things that we're going to be purchasing. Although we could have purchased inventory and fixed assets uh, as, as well. So that's what we'll do next time. And as we do that, like with the checking account, we can add bank rules so that even though the first time we do this, it's a pain, but when we set it up properly and we do it well, and we fully, uh, we, don't, we don't send you know, people to the wrong areas once we pull them out of bank feed limbo and then send them to, like, to, to a, bad, a worse spot and mess up the financial statements, if we set it up properly, then uh, then it'll be basically automated going forward and then things will be easy. We gotta go through the pain to start and then uh, and then once we once we once we put in the work, man, you gotta put in the work. I don't I'm not gonna say that for it. It's a trendy for it, but it's kinda it's, it's kinda applicable here because you gotta do this you gotta do it the first point and then it'll be easy after that. So we'll start doing that. Uh, in future presentations, no change to the financial statements yet. So we don't need to take a look at the trial balance or anything and we'll move on next time.